it's a fun six woman tag team match. A stellar match that should have been at All Out, but unfortunately couldn't do to visa issues if you're gonna believe that, and an amazing main event that sent the Cincinnati crowd home happy. Welcome to a brand new episode of Can We Talk Wrestling where we are reviewing Rampage. It's our first Rampage review, I'm so excited. And we are starting. Yes, if you didn't see the video before, I'm back. Hi. I know. It's been a while. But let's start just like Rampage started, which was with Andrade versus Pac. Now this match ow, was absolutely amazing. Everything it should have been at All Out. It got all the time it needed. And Andrade picks up the win, making him 2-0, which is actually kind of shocking because I know Kyle and I have kind of talked about this. I know I'm giving Kyle a shine that Andrade, I feel, or we feel, is kind of being lost in the shuffle because he's really only had two matches and it was against Matt Seidel and then his match against Pa. So, um, kind of scary a little bit. But the match was really good, like I said. And after the match, he turned on Chavo Guerrero. He... My guy! I worked with Chavo! I love Chavo. He's a great dude. He turned on Chavo and... Pac and the Lucha Bros just destroyed Chavo, so Chavo had a really rough Friday night. So now, by speculation, does this mean that a certain 16-time World Heavyweight Champion is going to come in and save the day and it's going to manage Andrade? Possibly. Now, if that happens, does Charlotte come in? Also possibly. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with this now. It's Gonna be interesting to see where Pac and the Lucha Bros go from here, where Andrade's gonna go, and if Ric Flair is gonna come, and when is Ric Flair going to come? Hmm, Arthur Rush. Maybe Arthur Rush. Maybe Full Gear. I don't know. But keep that in the back of your head. Ric Flair might be coming to AEW. Then from there, so Wednesday, Tully called out Sting and Darby, and Sting and Darby cut a promo saying how Tully just likes to ride people's coattails. And Tully came out to defend himself, and then Sean Spears attacked Darby. So now on Wednesday, it is going to be Darby Allen versus Sean Spears with Tully Blanchard and staying in both of their men's respective corners. I don't... So part of me feels like this is going to lead to, like, Sting and Darby versus Tully and Sean, which I low-key don't want. Because, I mean, Sting can still go. Don't get me wrong. We've seen that. It's been proven. But... I feel as if you kind of want to save Sting and not have him have so many matches. And I know Tully hasn't wrestled since he was with FTR, I want to say in the beginning of 2021, if not the end of 2020, if I can remember. It was on a dynamite. Oh, I did, oh, it was when there was no crowd still, so it was probably in 2020. So, I don't know if that's the direction they're going to head in. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, like I said. But the match on Wednesday should be really good. The promotion is really good, too. I mean, you really can't go wrong with... A Tully Blanchard promo. But speaking of promos, we go from there to Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan. Adam Cole says, The Elite is at its strong point. He trusts Kenny and the Young Bucks with their entire lives. And the Elite's main purpose is that they were all structured to be great individual performers coming together to prove that they dominate the wrestling world. And also says that he is ready to destroy Brian Danielson. Where Brian Danielson comes back and says he just came to AEW to have some fun. He is ready to basically destroy the roster. <laughs> And he is ready for his match against Kenny Omega. And he thinks that Kenny Omega is just not answering because he's scared. Also talks about how the way the Elite dresses makes them cowards. Now, if Adam Page is not returning at the Virginia show, I think right after Full Gear, it's the Dynamite right after it's in Virginia, which is Adam Page's hometown, so, if Adam Page is returning at that show, that means at Full Gear it's going to be Kenny and Brian. If Adam Page is returning before that show, that means at Full Gear it's going to be Adam Page versus Kenny Omega. So, it's going to be interesting to see what direction they really go in. The Daniel Bryan-Kenny Omega match is going to be phenomenal no matter when and where it takes place. 
hopefully soon because I want to see that match really badly but the promos that Cole and Danielson cut were absolutely phenomenal as they should because they're two amazing performers from there we go to a hi <laughs> hello <laughs> but like that little screen thing yeah that's like the error. Yeah, error. That that thing. I gotta find it. Yeah, that should. We go to a fun six one tag team match between Ruby Soho, Chris Statlander, and Riho versus DMD Britt Baker, Re Rebel. Wow, not Reba. Rebel and Jamie Jamie Hater. This match was so much fun. Ruby is looking like she's having the time of her life in AEW and she's just ready to take on Britt Baker one on one, which I'm also assuming is gonna happen at full gear because they haven't announced it for Arthur Ashe. But the feud is amazing. Ruby is just a phenomenal wrestler and from there we go to our main event. Excuse me, I need an ice pack. <laughs> I, I can't wait for the audio listeners <laughs> to be like, who? Goodbye. <laughs> for those who don't, oh, actually, you haven't been on the set. For those who don't know, that's my roommate, Allie. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we go to Max Caster versus Brian Pillman Jr. Now, this is a match that I was kind of surprised we went to, but Brian Pillman looked absolutely amazing. The commentators built on the fact that this he was in his hometown, and it was his biggest match of his career, and Brian Pillman gets the win in front of his family for his dad, and while the acclaimed was beating Pillman up at the end, the other Cincinnati hometown grown talent, John Moxley, came out and made the save and had both Brian Pillman and John Moxley standing strong at the end of Rampage. Now, Rampage is such a fun show. I love that it's one hour. You get a lot of talent in, especially those who really aren't showcased on Dynamite every single week. And I just think it's a great show. And unlike WWE, AEW kept their women's match on the show. But I'm not the first person who said that, and I'm also not, I mean, I'm mad about it, but like, you know, I'm not that annoying person. But that's it for me, so, now that I'm back, and there's already chaos, so, you can see me on Mondays, well, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Saturdays, reviewing Raw, and NXT, and AEW, and SmackDown, and Rampage, and pay-per-views, and so much fun stuff, so make sure to follow the Holes Bar Network with our 1.4K subscribers, which I saw when I logged on, so thank y'all. You can follow me at Kimmy underscore Sokol on Twitter, Kimmy Talk Wrestling on Instagram, and if you also want to find me doing a lot of other cool things, check out thepopbreak.com. I'm actually reviewing Dynamite in written form, so if you don't want to watch my video, you can check out my Dynamite review in written form, and you can check it out on maybe one on Wednesday too. Or you could check me out on the Bob Culture Podcast, Young and Kyle and doing a lot of fun stuff. But also on this channel, make sure to check out the All Elite Podcast, which is on Sunday. They're reviewing Dynamite, BTE, Dark, Elevation, and Rampage. And also check out Indie Talks with Tiff. And I think that's about it. So I'll see you all Tuesday when we review Raw. And um, Allie might interrupt up some more. But that is okay, because I think the fans like Allie. So, yay.